Tribute to Design. This honoree is known as the master of maximalism, the creator of warm and sexy modern design. The honoree built a renowned high-end architecture and design practice, Architropolis, responsible for many recognized high-profile and award-winning designs for resorts, casinos, boutique hotels, and highly recognizable residences. Sought after by billionaires, the Jet Set, and celebrities such as Lenny Kravitz and Cindy Crawford, the honoree erected homes and hotels around the world. The honoree is also known for product and industrial design, most notably his Motosiz line of American racing motorcycles, amassing more than 30 patents, and his foray into electric racing motorcycles, which set a new standard at the Isle of Man, the most prestigious motorcycle race in the world. A creative engineer, a designer, a competitive road racer, and true Renaissance man, Introducing Michael Siz. My design philosophy has always been simple and bold. I wanted to strip things down and make them simpler, simultaneously make them bolder. And that really came across, I think, clear in the designs. I was a modernist from the beginning and have always been, but frankly just felt that the definition of modernism uh, was so clearly defined. Also, it was already perfectly executed before I arrived, and anything at that point would just be duplicating what was already there. So what's the point of that? And to be completely honest, even though I loved modern uh, for the sense of the serenity and the organization, it was cold. And you've always heard this from everybody, you know, oh, we like modern, but we could never live in it. So I thought if I could make warm modern, then this would be something new and something worthwhile and possibly speak to the people that didn't like modern. And so we kind of started really pursuing this sexy modernism. And then immediately we got uh, invited to Vegas. Once I started pursuing that, uh, a new phrase was brought up and I was uh, coined uh, the master of maximalism. And it's based on minimalism. So you still have that foundation of order and organization. You don't have additional ornamentation that you need in the architecture. The structure is solid, the structure is sound, the program is sound, all that is minimalistic. But then when you start stepping into it, you start adding layers where a minimalist would stop. You start working on the other senses. You care about the acoustics. You care about the sound. You care about what the furniture looks like, what the furniture feels like, what the floors feel like when you lay on them, or when you lay on the floor and you look up what you see on the ceiling, and then how that light looks on you when you look in the ceiling, if it's a mirror, and how the, when you look at the other person, how they look and how they're lit. And all those things make you feel better, make you feel more warm, more giving, more sexy, and in return, you get those things back. People are exposed to design, and they want more than just a minimalistic room. What's good about being true to yourself or true to your own design, it's not that every design is the same. Um, in fact, if you look at our portfolio, it's extremely diverse, but there is a theme throughout. But what it did do was spoke to clients and future clients, and we seemed to attract the kind of client that wanted the work that we did. The majority of my clients uh, just said, do what you want, do what you do. Uh, that's, this is what we want. The day we decided to do the project, he left and we did not let him in that home for nine months. He never saw one aspect of it until it was done. That is a huge amount of pressure and a huge amount of trust. The day he came on site, we were both walking around, crying, laughing, hugging, and that was the payoff, and that's why that project meant so much. As a designer, I'm a problem solver, and, yeah. and I, I told the crew you know, that would often be with me, and him and Ha about us having to redo something over. I kept saying, guys, if there is no problem, we're not needed. You know, we have no job, we have no purpose. So you have to look at problems as positives and embrace them. I just got hungrier and hungrier for bigger and bigger problems. Enter Moto Sizz. <laughs> we come from uh, one of the greatest countries in the world. We consume some of the uh, the highest volume of, of high-performance cars and motorcycles in the world, more than any other country. And we really don't make any of those products. And it was like, wow, 
I know the market. I am the demographic. I know this better than the guys in Italy making bikes for the United States. What if we could design a bike uh, for the United States in the United States? It could be done here. We have the resources. We have everything. So I decided to take that on. The problem with that is if you want to pursue design and problem solving, starting a company like a motorcycle company uh, takes you the furthest from designing and problem solving. For sure it was a worthwhile pursuit, but um, on the aesthetic side, uh, spending about two weeks a year designing. Architecture, as great as it is, you know, it doesn't go 200 miles an hour. It doesn't break at 1G and it doesn't lean over at you know, 50 degrees. It doesn't create the adrenaline uh, that riding a motorcycle does. What you physically do on a bike is so graceful, is so physical, has so much of an impact on the machine that you meld with the machine way more than you do in any other aspect. You accelerate faster. Your every inch of body movement impacts that bike because if you remember, you're 30% of maybe the overall weight. When you're on the bike, you're sitting on the bike, there's nothing there. You're physically holding on to the bike. You're physically using you know, your toes and you have to be so much more sensitive and calm while maintaining 180 beats per second heartbeat at 200 miles an hour. You know, they always say that uh, really breakthroughs come from irrational thought. We probably had a little bit of irrational thought in the process, uh, but in the end we really did come up with a bike and our record has is, is been incredibly successful. I would hope that people at least understood that I was daring and never gave up. And I think that's one of the things that you see on the motorcycle side of things. The 2014 A Tribute to Design Honoree for Interior Architecture and Industrial Design is Michael Sizz.